my grandmother lit a 40-year fuse when I asked about an unknown side of our family tree. She said, one of your paternal great-grandmothers was a madam. She was a lady of the evening, and she ran a house of ill repute in Stowe, Ohio. She came from the South, had a business in Chicago, and married her best customer. That cryptic and startling revelation would lead us to this tiny corner of Marion, Ohio today. Marion, not Stowe, not Chicago, Marion. Home of Madam Lizzie, Rogers, Lape, Huffman, Larzelier, DeWitt, DeWitt, Vion, Shetler, France. But you can call her Lizzie. Everyone else did. Biographers of President Warren G. Harding referred to this spot as the shady side of the street, where the White Pigeon Saloon and Bordello were located. Lizzie owned and operated this rowdy place starting in 1886 for a full 20 years. That's a long time for any business, let alone a disreputable one. Don't let her tenure here fool you. Hers was a franchise operation. Lizzie moved like a fast-moving train through Whitley and Kenton County, Kentucky, Chicago and Shelbyville, Illinois, and mid-Ohio cities and towns including Plain City, Columbus, Dayton, Lima, Marion, Akron, Canton, Cuyahoga Falls, Stowe, Shelby, North Fairfield, Norwalk, and New Cumberland. It would take 40 years for me to uncover her story. It took far less than that for the family to bury it. Lizzie was a businesswoman in an unholy, though mostly legal trade when she began her career. Many people made money from her commerce. The butcher, the baker, distilleries, and the schools, cities, and authorities that taxed her trade legally and sometimes illegally with rake-offs and bribes. Madam Lizzie was a woman who believed in land value. She invested her gains in purchasing property, lots of property. She was also a romantic, marrying eight different times, one time to a son and then to his father. That might not have been so romantic. Lizzie's generation was the first to be able to retain property ownership before, during, and after marriage, thanks to Susan B. Anthony and many other progressive women. Lizzie was a lucky bride and a steady customer of the U.S. court system. She was the first madam in Marion County to be sued under the new Wynn Law, restricting alcoholic consumption in a bordello. She won. Oddly enough, her many court wins in divorce, municipal, and state courts helped all women move forward with greater personal freedom. Lizzie was for Lizzie, but she pushed the door wide open for many others. In the end, there's a personal side to Lizzie's story. She was somebody's grandma, mine, over a century ago. My quest for her would take me to overgrown graveyards and decaying prisons, to churches and saloons, courthouses and presidential symposiums. I walked rutted hollers and marble lined memorials and found my Lizzie legacy in all of them. You can read Looking for Lizzie to discover the rest of her story. <laughs>